Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to learn how to find the largest common factor. Now, this is also called the greatest common factor. Here we have three sets of two numbers. We're going to try to find the largest common factor in each of those cases. The first thing you should do is to see if the smaller of the two numbers fits evenly into the larger number. For example, does 36 fit into 48? In this case, it doesn't. How about 24? Does it fit into 32? Mm, not evenly. But here we can see that 16 fits into 32. That means that 16 would, would be the largest common factor of these two numbers. So in this case, 16 is the answer because 16 fits into 32 evenly exactly two times. But we don't have that luck in the first two sets of numbers. So we need to use a different technique for that. What you should do is take each of the two numbers and divide it by the smallest prime number. Starting with 48, we can divide that by 2. We get 24. Divide that by 2, we get 12. And you continue dividing by the smallest prime number until you can no longer do so. 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3, which in itself is a prime number. That means we're now done. We can now write 48 as the product of a set of prime numbers. So 48 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2, oops, a little too long here, times 2 times 3. So 48 is now written as a product of the smallest possible prime numbers. We can do the same with 36. 36 divided by 2, that's equal to 18. 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9. Now 9 is no longer even. That means we now have to go to the next prime number, which is 3. 9 divided by 3 gives me 3, which means that 9, oh, not 9, but 36. 36 can now be written as the product of 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. To find the largest common factor or the greatest common factor, what you need to do now is look at the product of these prime numbers and circle all of them by type. So we have the number 2, the smallest prime number number 2. We have four of them, so let's circle the 4 here. And here we have 1, 3, let's circle the 3. Over here, when we look at 36 as being the product of these prime numbers, we have two twos and we have two threes. Now you're looking for the common factors. Well, this one has two twos, this one has four of them, but you can only grab the smallest number of them. Here we have two, so they have two that are common to one another, which means the greatest common factor or the largest common factor, the LCF or the largest common factor, will be the smallest of the two numbers of twos, which is two times two, and multiply the times the smallest of the number of threes that you have. Here you have two of them, but here you only have one. That means you can only grab one of them. If you multiply this together, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. 12 becomes the largest common factor or the greatest common factor. Again, how did we do that? We looked at the number 36. We have two 2's and two 3's in the product of the prime numbers. We looked at the number 48. We have four 2's and one 3 in the product of these prime numbers. We grabbed the smallest number of them. Here we have 2, there we have 4, so we, get, we grab just the 2 from here. And for the number for the threes, here we have two of them, here we have one, we just grab the smallest number of them, only one of the threes here, multiply these numbers together, and here's your largest common factor. Hmm, maybe didn't quite catch that, so there's another example for us to find the largest common factor between the numbers 24 and 32. Again, we grab the number 24, and we divide it by the smallest prime number, that's 2, 24 divided by 2 is 12. Since it's still even, we can divide it by 2, we get 6. Since it's still even, we can divide it by 2, we get 3. Which means 24 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, which means we have 3 2's and 1 3. Now we do the same with the number 32. Since 32 is even, we can divide it by 2, we get 16. Still divided by 2, we get 8. Still divided by 2, we get 4, and divided by 2, we get 2, which means that 32 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which means we have 5 of these. 
not to find the lowest common factor or I should say the largest common factor. We're not looking for the lowest, the largest common factor because what would be the lowest common factor? That would be the number one. One is always the lowest common factor of all the numbers. So the largest common factor or the greatest common factor is, well, let's see here. We have the largest common factor. We have three twos here. We have five twos over here. We grab the smallest of the numbers. That's three of them. Two times two times two. And here we have one three, but here we have none. That means we can't grab any threes. This then becomes the largest common factor, two times two times two, which is eight. Eight is the largest common factor between these two numbers, which means they can both be divided by eight, which is the largest number that fits evenly into both of them. You grab any larger number, you will not find that they fit into both 24 and 32 at the same time. And that's the, the technique that we used to find the largest common factor. Remember, always check to see if the smallest number evenly fits in the largest number. If it does, you're done. If you don't see that, if that's not possible, then you have to break each number down as a product of prime numbers. You then grab the number of prime numbers that are two. Here there's two of them, there's four of them. You grab just the smallest number, two. Here there's three threes and only uh, two threes and only one three. You grab the smallest number here, multiply that together. That gives you the largest common factor. Now to make sure that everybody understands what we really mean with the largest common factor or the greatest common factor, what we should do, and it's also a really good check, is take the number that we found and see if it fits evenly into the initial two numbers. In other words, if I take 48 and I divide it by 12, do I get an integer number? And the answer is yes. 12 goes into 48 exactly four times. Same with the number 36 divided by the largest common factor, 12, and we better get an integer here. 36 divided by 12, that is indeed 3, no remainder. That means since, both, since this largest common factor fits evenly into both 48 and 36, we know we have found the answer. And the right answer because no bigger number will fit evenly into 48 or 36. So this shows us what a largest common factor is, and this shows us how to check it to make sure we got the right answer. Let's do the same over here. 24 divided by 8. That again gives me an integer number that's equal to 3. And 32 divided by 8, that gives me 4, which means that 8 is a common factor to both 24 and 32. And notice that if I try any of the bigger factors, none of them will fit evenly into 24 and 32, so that would not be the right answer. 8 indeed here is the right answer, so that's a quick way to check to see what it means to have the largest common factor and to make sure you did it correctly. And that's how it's done.